tracking. But with that, let's also move on and tell you about all of the cues that you should track as we get into this fresh trading session. Our research team is here with the trade setup and all of the individual names that you should watch today. We have Reema, Nigel, and Vivek here with the trade setup. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. And uh, Reema, let me come across to you first. The handover is positive. Looks like we'll get a good start. But you know, it is the weekly expiry as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see which way things go. Absolutely. We've got two good days on the trot. And yesterday, the Nifty in the late surge managed to conquer that 18,000 mark and close above it. The next big level to track will be those 18,200 to 18,250. That was the previous swing high on the Nifty. We hit it sometime in the early January. But as you said, it's the weekly options expiry today. Uh, the SGX Nifty is suggesting a positive start. Let's see whether we can climb. Uh, Nestle results will be uh, Nestle will be reporting numbers today, so that's going to be on your radar. The FIs have bought in the cash market for the fourth consecutive day. Yesterday, they bought 432 crore in the cash market. But remember, the FI inflows have dwindled. So, um, you know, on 10th of February, that's on Friday, that's last Friday, the FIs had pumped in nearly 1450 crore. Then on Monday, that number came down to about 1322 crore. On Tuesday, it was down to 1300 crore. And on Wednesday, it was down to 432 crore. But the fact that the FIs have been continuously buying for four days is a positive. The DIIs too bought yesterday and they bought about 560. Crores. In fact, for the last three trading sessions that this week, we've had the both FIs and the DIIs buying in the cash market together. So the net institution number has been positive. U.S. market handover was positive. The lead there was taken by Nasdaq as a rally close to about 1%. The U.S. retail sales have come in stronger than what the street was anticipating, suggested, suggesting that the U.S. economy is still in fine fettle. Today, the focus will be on the weekly jobless claims data, the January housing starts. These are the two economic reports we'll watch from the United States. But for our own markets, the question is whether the momentum will continue and we can we take out the previous swing high of 18,200 to 18,250. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues for the market. We are going to track all of this very closely, but let's also talk about the individual names that you should have on your radar today. Vivek is here with that entire list, and Vivek, once more, Adani Group stocks um, likely to be in focus today. Well, absolutely right. And, you know, for a change, expect some green across the screen, you know, amongst all of these names. So what's actually happened is that MSCI today morning has uh, given an announcement saying that they've gone ahead and deferred the implementation of certain weight reductions that were to happen across the Adani Group stocks in this particular index review or the Feb index review. Uh, so Adani... Uh, Total as well as Adani transmission, they will see the deferment of the implementation of the weight reduction in this particular review. Uh, also, keep on your radar Interglobe Aviation. You know, sources tell us that um, Shoba Gangwal, you know, erstwhile promoter entity, is likely to sell almost 4% stake in the company. This is going to be done via the block deal. We understand that the floor price for this particular offer is at uh, 1,875 rupees a share, and the offer size of the particular deal is almost close to 2,930 crore rupees. Post this particular block deal, you know, there is a lockup period of almost 150 days uh, for further sale of shares. And just to give some context, you know, in February 2022, uh, Rakesh Gangwal had said that he is going to be stepping down from the board and intends to pair his take down uh, from the company over a five year period. Um, so at the end of the December quarter, they held almost 33.78% stake. Uh, so, you know, this is now going to drop down to a little over 29%. Keep an eye out on Adani Power as well. The company has now decided not to proceed with the acquisition of DB Power and the long stop date for this particular acquisition has now expired. Lastly, Patel Engineering, you know, the company has emerged as the lowest bidder uh, for projects worth almost uh, a little over 1,560 crore in both MP as well as Maharashtra. All right, Vivek, thanks a lot for that entire list of stocks. And like Reema was pointing out, Nestle will also be posting its results today. So that will be important to watch. Yesterday, of course, the stock, you know, did quite well. It was up around 1%. But with that, let's also move on and talk about all of the cues from the futures and options space. And Nigel is here with exactly that. Hi, Nigel. Well, morning, Pavitra. Now, just uh, listening into what you all had to say. And the SJX Nifty, well, that's indicating a bit of a gap up. But the other global cues, the dollar index is moving towards around 104. The Brent crude prices as well, holding above $85 per barrel. And uh, the U.S. bond yields moved to around 3.8 percent. Put all this together, I think this morning taking some money off the table on the gap up will not be such a bad idea.
from the domestic perspective and from the FNO perspective, the PCR we were pointing a couple of days back that it is at around 0.8 odd. Now it's moved to the higher end of the band. When it cools off to around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 odd, that's one of the indications to buy the index. Now, in fact, it's moving to the upper end, so maybe taking some money off the table may not be such a bad idea. What are the FIs doing in the FNO market? Well, they added close on 2,000 short contracts, sort of. now the short positioning is at around 74%. On the uh, option side, well, they bought more puts uh, than calls. So yesterday, in fact, they bought close to around three puts for every one call that they bought. So protection on the downside continues. While uh, on the writing side, well, they wrote more puts than calls as well. They wrote close to around two puts for every one call that's written, telling you that maybe the base of the index from around that 17,350, it moved around 17,550. Now, uh, you know, it appears that 17,750 odd could be the level. Because just look at the options data. 18,100 call, 18,050 call. Well, there was some bit of writing out there. Today's weekly expiry, so you'll have to eye that 18,050 odd mark because the writers of that particular strike, they are counting on the 18,080, 18,090 odd level holding out. On the downside, though, we're seeing a fair bit of action. 18,000 put was very active, 17,950 put saw a fair bit of writing. So take you into the levels right away then. The near term support should be around 17,750. The 50 DMA, that'll be a bit of a congestion zone. We're going to be opening up closer to that. So that's why I think that maybe taking some money off the table could be prudent. While on the Nifty Bank, the 50 DMA is some distance away. But on the downside, 41,200 odd has been a bit of a support. So keep an eye out on that, Mark. Back to you. All right, we will keep an eye out for that. Nigel, Rima, Vivek, thank you very much for joining us and prepping us up for this trading session. We are going to get into a short break now, but when we return, like we told you, the MSCI has deferred.